Hi everyone. I'm going to be talking to you about Balaam's donkey using Numbers 22, 21 to 35 and focusing particularly on suffering a beating because of having seen the Lord. So first of all, a little bit of background. Uh, Balaam, a prophet, fortune teller into divination, as we can tell from those last words, he was not an Israelite. Although he knew of God and could hear him at least at times and would seek him at least at times, he was not a follower of God as such. And then we have Balak, who was the Moabite king. He'd heard something of Balaam's fame and he wanted Balaam to go and help them out with a threat or a perceived threat that they had from the Israelites. He wanted Balaam to go and curse the Israelites so that they would not be under threat because of them. So ba he sent some Moabites to go and seek Balaam out. Balaam sought the Lord to see what he had to say about it. And the Lord was very clear, absolutely not. The Israelites are my people. They are not to be cursed. They are to be blessed. The Moabites left, but they then came back again. And this time they uh, offered uh, Balaam a whole array of different gifts and things, tried to bribe, encourage, insist that he needed to go back with them and curse the people of Israel. Balaam sought the Lord again, uh, but uh, on this occasion it seemed that the Lord was saying yes, but there was actually uh, a very powerful clause there, do only what I tell you to do. <clears throat> so when the next morning Balaam set out, uh, he was not doing what God wanted him to do. God was not happy with him. And the angel of the Lord appeared to uh, Balaam and the donkey, but Balaam didn't see the angel of the Lord. So the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, but Balaam didn't. He was distracted, lost his focus, quite possibly thinking about all of the numerous gifts he was going to receive and completely distracted. Now, there are three things that I would particularly like to highlight from this story. Um, the first thing is that we see in this example that the awe of God is so great in, in experiencing his presence that when we are in God's presence, that awe is enough to help us to overcome the fear of man. And that's what we see with Balaam's donkey. Because of having seen the presence of the angel of the Lord, that fear of uh, continuing to move forwards was greater than any fear of the consequences of not doing that. So that is an example that we can follow in our lives. In my life, I know um, when I became a Christian, I was 15 at the time, there were people in my life who were not happy with that decision. But because I had, had a very tangible experience of the Lord when I on the night when I gave my life to him on my own in my bedroom, that helped me to be able to stand firm and I did have other experiences of God that again were very tangible and helped me to stand firm. Now what I experienced was nothing in comparison to what many of our brothers and sisters in the persecuted church are experiencing. We only need to read information from Open Doors or Voice of the Martyrs to see that just by becoming Christians or deciding to take that step of faith into baptism. Uh, there are people around the world every day who are putting their lives at risk by making that decision. And yet their awe of God is greater than their fear of man. And that's the, an example that we see uh, in Balaam's donkey. So although Balaam beat his donkey on three uh, occasions, uh, the donkey would not keep moving forward because the presence of, of the Lord was telling him not to. 
had the awe of the Lord. Then the second thing that I would like to highlight is the impact that it has when we are faithful to what God is telling us to do or not to do, as was the case with Balaam's donkey. Obviously, having become Christians ourselves, uh, that saves us from the consequences of, of death. Uh, so we have our own salvation in having made that decision. And we also have uh, the fact that we can live a freer and more fruitful life in abundance if we make the, the good decisions. But there's also the fact that we, have, we can have an impact on other people. So with Balaam's donkey, we see that Balaam's donkey in not moving forwards it was saving its own life potentially because there was that fear that if it moved forward it could die but it saved Balaam's life when we have more awe of God than fear of man that is when God can use us uh, to be part of his work in saving other people it's not that we save people of course we don't the salvation comes from Jesus but when we are bold to be faithful in obedience to what God says to us, we can have an impact on other people's lives so that they too can be saved from death. And that is what we see with Balaam's donkey, saved Balaam from death. And the Lord was very clear about that uh, a bit later on in the story saying, if the donkey had kept moving forward, I would have killed you. I would have saved the donkey, but I would have killed you. Then the third thing is that when Balaam starts saying, if I had a sword, I would kill you. So threatening that it want, he wanted to kill the donkey. The Lord enabled the donkey to speak. God will give us the words. If we are placed in a situation of persecution God will give us the words to say he did it with a donkey and donkeys can't speak <laughs> Matthew 10 19 says but when they arrest you do not worry about what to say or how to say it at that time you will be given what to say so though the world may tell us don't be a donkey in many ways, we do need to be donkeys. At least we need to be like Balaam's donkey. We need to have more awe of God than fear of man. We need uh, to be so focused on being obedient that not only do we live our own Christian life and life in abundance, but we can be focused on that goal of wanting to see others being saved from death as well. And then finally, God will give us the words to say he did it for a donkey. God bless you all.